I want you to turn with me to Isaiah 35 tonight. <clears throat> Isaiah prophesied about the way of the way of holiness. The way of holiness. I don't know about you, but I feel like many times I've stumbled and bumbled all over the way of holiness. Crash and burn. Fumble around and make messes out of things. But yet God is faithful. Even when we stumble and bumble and make messes, God is still there with us. So tonight I want to talk about responding to God. Because God wants to lead, God wants to direct, God wants to speak to us. How do we respond? How, how do we respond to God? Uh, Isaiah 35 and 4. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Verse number 8, a highway shall be there. It shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. It shall belong to those who walk on the way. Even if they are fools, they shall not go astray. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast upon, come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Praise God. Thank you for your word, Lord. Help me to minister your word tonight, God, in a way that will bring you glory and will edify your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Isaiah said, God's going to come and save us. God's going to come and save us. That verse number four, he said, tell the fearful, tell the, the, the concerned, tell those that are worried, God will come and save you. Church, we can rest in that. Even when we're stumbling and bumbling and fumbling around and making messes, God will come and save us. He never gets tired. He, he never gives up on us. He, 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 he never, uh, you know, I love this saying that I remember when it dawned on my life about about uh, oh, about 30 years ago, uh, I was in my early 20s. It dawned on me something that, you know, one of those moments when like in the cartoons, a light bulb would be up there above your head. When, when it dawned on me that I can't do anything to make God love me any less. God is for me and not against me, you know. And, and so when we realize that and understand that, <clears throat> he's going to come and he's going to take care of us. All we've got to do is respond to him. And he has promised that he's going to come and he's going to bring vengeance and recompense uh, with him. So uh, when God comes to save us, as Isaiah says in verse number four there, he comes for his children with healing in his wings for his children. He comes with renewal and restoration in, in, in his wings. Uh, I can remember getting to the age where my mom no longer disciplined me, and it was dad who, who did the disciplining. And I can remember that. And I can remember mom saying, just wait till dad gets home. <laughs> and there's a fearful trepidation of dad coming home from work, you know, because you know that, that he's not going to listen to any reasoning. He's not going to ask you, you know, mom's going to tell him what's wrong, and then he's going to dispense judgment at least that's how it was for me and so you dread that you know for however many hours it is until dad comes home from work and so uh, God isn't coming for us as his children to bring punishment to us it is not something that we need to be afraid of praise God but we should welcome and look forward to those seasons of refreshing when the spirit of the Lord comes in our midst of need and we've been we've been uh, compressed by circumstances we've been attacked by the enemy we, we've we've made a mess of things in our own self by, by by doing things through our limited understanding and just being human beings and 
We don't have to go and run like Adam and try to hide ourselves like Eve, but we can welcome the presence of the Lord because to his children, to his church, he comes with healing. He comes with, with, with restoration on his mind. He comes with making things right in his heart when he comes to us at that point because God wants us to be healed. He wants us to be awakened. He wants us to get on board with him and travel. That's why Isaiah talks about this highway. There is a highway there, he says. And, and let, me, let me be clear about something before I dive into this really deeply. Being on the highway of holiness is not about driving the bus. It's about letting the Holy Spirit be the driver. And you're just a passenger on the bus. You, you let him drive. You let God be in charge. On the, that's the only way to walk on the highway of holiness is for God to be in charge of, of, what, uh, of what we're doing and, and, and where we're going. You see, when God sets us apart, when he heals us, when he wakes us up to the things of the Spirit, he invites us, come and walk with me in the way of holiness. He didn't leave us at an altar. He didn't leave us in the birthing uh, sweet, you know. He didn't leave us at the point of our new birth, uh, but he says, now come uh, and walk with me. Jesus says, take up your cross uh, daily and follow me. Walk with me in this way. Come on and go with me. We know that he is the way. We know that he knows the way, and we know that he has already been where he is leading us to. You know, if you ever get to go on, a, go on vacation or go on a trip somewhere and you pay to have a guide, you know, you pay to have somebody take you, 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 you don't want somebody that's never been there before that's just reading a, <laughs> a pamphlet or whatever. Man, I can do that myself. If you get a guide at the Grand Canyon or you get a guide in Washington, D.C. or a guide in, in the Holy Land, you want somebody that's been there before. They know the way, and they've been there before, and they can tell you all about it. Folks, in the Spirit, we have the best guide available through our God Almighty because He is the way, He knows the way, and He's been where He is taking us before. He's already made a way that we may be able to bear everything that comes our way. So how do we respond when God comes? Because that's what verse 4 says, be strong, fear not. Your God will come. Your God will come. I'm telling you, in the midst of your sickness, we can look for God to show up. In the midst of our loneliness, God will show up. In the midst of our troubles and our trials, God will show up. In the midst of the life that feels like it's falling apart, if you ever get there, God will show up. In the midst of your family problems, of your difficulties, of your dark midnight of your soul, God will show up. Look for him and anticipate his coming into your life. But how do we respond when that happens? We've got to first of all get on board with Jesus and walk in the way of holiness. The way of holiness, the highway of holiness. Now, I know they didn't have anything like modern highways when Isaiah penned this, but I can't help but picture a modern highway when, when, when I read those words, you know. Getting on that highway, as you're about to merge into that highway, they give you a, a lane for getting up to speed and merging into traffic. We have to decide, you know, you got to decide, am I going to go or am I going <laughs> to, or am I not going to go, right? Worst thing you can do, in my opinion, on the, mer on the, the merge lane is to hesitate. Amen. You've got to either go or not go, you know. And so, folks, we've got to decide to be all in with Christ to come on and merge right into the flow of the Holy Spirit, to get in and let God move us along on, uh, uh, on the highway. There, there's two things that stand out to me about this journey that, that we're on. Uh, and, and the first thing is every journey has a starting point, right? Uh, the, the, what is the old proverb? Uh, the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step something like that. So, right, we, we've, got to, we've got to take that first step, no matter how big the... So, I'm thankful that I can remember a time in, uh, in the spring of, uh, of uh, 1984 
when my journey with Christ began at an old altar in my old country church that I grew up in, when I know that I know that I gave my heart to Jesus Christ that night. Nobody can tell me any difference. The preacher didn't have to say, that's salvation, because I knew when I made that connection with Christ that my life was no longer the same. <clears throat> but, you know, there are times when I have detoured off that highway, taken a, 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 a pit stop, taken a detour, decided to try to go my own way for a while and, and gotten off the highway of God's holiness. Doesn't mean I ever lost my salvation. It just I wasn't in God's perfect will, His perfect way of holiness. I was dabbling around on the, on the side roads. I remember years ago I was pastoring uh, in Ryzen, Arkansas. I had the opportunity to drive down to uh, Houston, Texas for a, a conference and and we, I was driving down, and I had, I had bought a Garmin GPS, uh, and had it in the car. And when I programmed where I wanted to go, it said you got three options: you can go the shortest way, the fastest way, anyway, whatever it was. So I said, well, I want to go the, the, the uh, shortest or the, the straightest, whatever it was. So we're driving, going down through Texas, and that thing would say, take the next exit. Take the next exit. And so you take the exit, you go down there, and it says, now proceed straight and re-enter the highway. Because the highway makes a big turn like this, but the exit kind of goes straight, you know? And so it gets you get off, set at a stoplight, wait, and then go straight across it and get back on. I thought, this thing is silly. But it did what I told it to. It said I wanted the straightest path there, you know? And so it was leading me. It was, I think GPS has improved a lot in the years since then. But, uh, but, but nevertheless, I always remember that. Every journey has a starting point. And, and sometimes we have to hit reset. Sometimes we have to start again. Sometimes we detour off. We get to thinking, I know better than the Holy Ghost. I know better. I, I'm going to make my own choice. Uh, this doesn't look like the right way. I think I ought to go that way. And we find ourselves through choice or through circumstance off of the highway. But God, but God comes when we make a, when we make a mistake, when we turn left, when we should have turned right. Uh, Last hunting season, I took Caleb out to, out to go hunting, and, and uh, on the way back home, I, I took a, an exit that I shouldn't have taken, and we went right through, uh, we went right through downtown uh, Newark, and I mean, right by the courthouse, you know, and we're going, and so I'm like, well, if I keep heading south, I'm eventually going to hit 70 again. I mean, it, it, it cuts across the state, so I know I'm going to run into it again. So we kind of wandered around until we found ourselves back to where we knew how to get home again. Folks, my spiritual life has been like that as well. I've made detours. I've made wrong turns. I've made poor choices, but I want to tell you, my spiritual life has a starting point, and it also has a reset point. When I realize that I have blown it, that I'm lost, so to speak, that I've made wrong choices, all I've got to do is call out upon God. I don't have to say, hey, Siri, <laughs> or hey, Alexa, but I can say, dear God, dear God, I need your help. I need you to show me the way and he will come. He will come, and he will help you. Uh, we, we, we get started. The starting point is our decision to follow him, and I want to make that decision fresh and new every morning when I wake up, when I roll out of bed. Lord, help me to follow you more perfectly than I did yesterday. I, I want to walk in the way of holiness I don't want to be in your way, God. I don't want to block anything that you're trying to do, but I want to walk on the highway of holiness with you. I want to be in your perfect will. You see, there's a lot of folks claiming to be saved, but there's not a lot of folks who want to walk in the way of holiness because they want Jesus to be their Savior, but they're not really interested in Jesus as the Lord. But I don't find in Jesus' message where you can divorce the two. I don't see where you can have a Savior without a Lord in the New Testament. We have to make Him our Lord and our Savior. Well, what's the difference? Salvation talks more about what happens after we die. The Lordship of Christ talks about more what we're making Him right now while we're still alive. A lot of people just want fire insurance. They want to, to pardon my expression, a get-out-of-hell 
free card, you know, I, I, but I want to still live my life the way I want to live my life. God, just take care of me when I die. But that's not the offer. He says, take up your cross right now and follow me. He didn't say, guys, here's your cross. It'll be here whenever you're ready for it. But he says, take up your cross and follow me. In another place, the Scripture says, anyone who has set his hand to the plow, y'all remember this Scripture, and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. He says a, a, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And James says that one who doesn't have commitment to the cause of Christ uh, is, is, is like a, a, a wave that is, that is just tossed about by every wind of doctrine. And so we've got to be settled in this thing. I'm going on. I, of course, who doesn't cherish the idea of avoiding judgment? Man, we see a society today that we're living in that nobody wants to, you know, to, to, to take blame for anything. It's always somebody else's fault, right? It's somebody else's fault. So, of course, if you offer salvation without dedication, people would want to lap that up. Sure, let me go ahead and drink and party and, and live the way that I want to and do whatever I want to, have all the, you know, and then take care of me when I die so I don't have to pay the consequences yeah, that sounds great, but that's not the gospel message that Jesus offers. He says salvation is available, it's free and clear, but it comes with a commitment to walk on the way of holiness that I have prepared for you. The second feature of a journey is if you're making a journey, you have a starting place and sometimes many reset places where you have to start again, but we are, if we're on a journey, we can tell that we're making progress. A friend of mine says, one of my adult goals is to beat the time that my GPS says that it's going to take me to make it somewhere. <laughs> if it says it's 22 minutes, I want to make it in 20, you know. <laughs> but we're making progress. We're making progress. Uh, as we drive around looking at, at houses, I plug that address in. You know, and it gives me an ETA. It says, you should be there at such and such time. And it shows me that I'm making progress. You'll be there in five minutes. You'll be there in four minutes. You're making progress. We should be able to look on our spiritual life and see, I'm not yet where I want to be. I haven't got all my, all, all my life in order the way that God wants it to be. But I can look back at where I started from, and I can tell you that I've come on a progression in my spiritual life. I've come a ways. We're making progress here. If you can't look back on your spiritual life of a year ago or five years ago and tell that you made progress, then you need to get to business with the Lord of getting busy on God's highway of holiness. You should know more about God now. You should have more of your life surrendered to Him now. You should trust Him more. Your faith should have grown. You should be able to tell, I understand more about God now than I did then, that there's been some progression that has been made on your spiritual journey otherwise it's not a journey is it if we're not making progress psalm 84 says it like this blessed are those whose strength is in you in whose hearts are the highways of zion as they go through the valley of baca they make it to the place of springs the early rain covers it with pools listen they go from strength to strength each one appears before God in Zion. He didn't say as they live in the valley, but as they go through, they make it to the springs of refreshing. David in this 23rd Psalm would say, though I walk through the valley, though I walk through the valley. He didn't say, though I live in the constant state of being in the valley, I'm making progress my trial started, and it's making progress, and it will eventually come to an end. I know that because I trust God that this is going to pass. We, we make it through. We get through this thing. We get through. On the journey, we go from strength. I love that, that Psalm 84. We go from strength to strength. <laughs> We go from strength to strength. What an idea picture. Instead of being all down in the mouth and saying, well, I just know something bad's about to happen. I actually had a Christian claim to be a Christian. I guess they were. That's between them and the Lord. But years ago, tell me, be careful. 
as I was talking about the blessings of God, I was talking about how God had blessed. Be careful, be careful, because the devil's going to come. And, you know, like we got to be, just know, well, God's blessing me today, but that just means something bad's going to happen tomorrow. Oh, man, I want to go from strength to strength. I want to give God praise that I've had a good day today and expect that I'm going to have a good one tomorrow. And if tomorrow's not good, then I'm going to give God praise that the day after that's got to be better because God is not going to leave me in the midst of the valley of Baca. He's not going to leave me in the midst of trouble, but he's leading me to a place where there are, where there are springs of refreshing coming up uh, uh, to restore me. And from strength to strength, from victory unto victory, the highway of holiness also starting point, progression, And there's a destination, right? There's a destination on this thing. When we get on board with Jesus, we got to have confidence that he knows where he's going. And he knows how to get us there. (laughs) I know there's a a lot of truth to the statement that, that some folks just don't like to ask for directions. Some folks just don't like to ask for directions. (laughs) Ah, uh, it's got to be around here somewhere. We'll, we'll find it. My, my dad talks a, about a story about when he was years ago, back uh, probably in the late uh, 70s. Him and uh, my mom drove a, uh, like a big U-Haul. They drove a big U-Haul truck from Little Rock up to Detroit. For, to set up for a, a trade show that the company that he works for was, was doing at some certain hall, H-A-L-L, in, in Detroit. Well, dad drives up there. They cannot find this place. Finally, after driving around long enough, uh, you know, dad decides to, that, he, that he'd ask somebody for help. Well, you know how it is with the way things are pronounced in one place versus the way you know, like is this Tussing or Tussing, you know? Uh, is, it, is it New Ark as it is in Arkansas or Nurk as, <laughs> you know? Uh, well, so dad finds a cop and he asks this cop, he says, I'm trying to find such and such hall. And that guy says, are you speaking English? <laughs> and so, uh, so finally he says, I'm looking for such and such hall. And he said, I've never heard of such. You know, I've been in Detroit. I've been a cop in Detroit for so many years. I've never heard of what we're talking about. Mom handed him the piece of paper. He read it. He says, oh, two blocks up and turn left. It's right there. (laughs) You know, But, but he had to speak the same language. He had to say a word that the police officer you know, these Michiganders, what are you going to do about them? Well, uh, aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that we have a God who nothing that we are asking him about gets lost in translation? God understands us, even when we don't understand, right? Sometimes you ever try to, you're asking somebody something and they clearly don't understand what it is you're trying to ask them. It gets so frustrating. Aren't you glad that God knows the way, he knows the destination, he knows how to get you from where you are to where you're going, and even when we don't know what to pray, he knows, he knows, he knows, he knows our request before we even voice them. He knows our needs before we even ask, and he's given us the Holy Spirit that groaneth and maketh maketh intercession for us even when we don't know what we ought to be asking. That's why it's so important that you pray in the spirit there's times you really don't even know what you ought to pray we pray in the spirit and the spirit prays for us and prays through us because we need direction we need to get to the right place at the right time isaiah 30 says though the lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction yet your teacher will not hide himself anymore Your eyes will see your teacher, and your ears will hear a word behind you saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it when you turn to the right or when you turn to the left. What's he saying? He's saying, Yes, sometimes God allows difficulty and adversity to come our way. 
but if we'll just listen. Remember what I said this morning? I said you need that devotional time where you just listen, where you give God a chance to speak. And many times there's that still small voice saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Turn to the left, turn to the right go straight. Folks, God doesn't want us to flounder around. He doesn't want us to be uh, uh, directionless. He doesn't want us to be confused. If we'll just listen, if we'll respond to him when he comes, uh, he will show us, he will lead us. It's right there in Isaiah 30 verses 20 and 21. He wants to speak and to give us direction. One of my favorite verses is, and when he, the spirit of truth, shall come, he shall teach you all things. God doesn't want you to be ignorant of the way. He wants you to be led by the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit, and to not fulfill the lust of the flesh. This destination that we're going to, verse number 10 of Isaiah 35 says, The ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads, <laughs> and they shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. <laughs> Man, I love that verse. Joy and everlasting joy and gladness and all the sorrow and sighing, all the misery is going to flee away. Man, there's no better place on earth than to be in the presence of the Lord Jesus. There's no better place you can ever be than to be in a place where you know the Spirit of the Lord is there. Because I'm telling you, those heavy weights just seem to fall away. The worries, the cares, the concerns seem to fall away. And in their place, we've got joy. We may still have the same problems waiting on us outside, but we've been given a new spirit. We've been given a new outlook. We've been refreshed. We've been renewed. And we face everything in our life with a new attitude because we've spent some time in the presence of the Lord. There is a destination that we're going, that we're going through. And the destination doesn't just mean <clears throat> in the great by and by when we finally make it over to heaven. I'm talking about a destination that's available for us every day when we're on the way of holiness, when we're walking in the way of righteousness. A destination every day means being in the presence of the Lord God as we make this journey. Any time along the way as we're progressing, as we're journeying, as we're going forward, we have that destination of time with the Lord God Almighty. Isn't it amazing that however many people there are across this world who might be praying to God at any one time, he still hears you. To me, that's one of those things that just baffles my, my poor understanding. But God is so awesome that it's no big deal for him. If every Christian that's alive on the face of the earth were to call out to God all at the same time, he would still not get overloaded. He still couldn't crash his system. <laughs> he could handle, he could handle it, you know. And, and so we know that the destination, I'm not just thinking of, well, I just got to suffer and make it until finally this life finally ends and I get to go to heaven. There's a destination that I can look forward to every day of being in the Spirit with the Lord. Even in the midst of, of my things that I'm going on right now. He's not far from me. He hasn't left me. He's not deserted me. He's not gone on to deal with bigger things and, and more important people or bigger churches or more important problems, but he's there every step, uh, every path along the way, all the time. If I'll just take time to respond to him, uh, even as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art, what, a long ways off looking at me? No, he says, you're with me. You're with me, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Thou prepared a table for me in the presence of my enemy. God is there with us no matter what is going on. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey because God is with you. You don't have to get to heaven to be with God. He is with us every step as we walk along this pathway every day. I'm so glad that this journey has a beginning point. I'm glad that I can look back and say, I know for sure that I was saved when I was 12 years old 
at Fairview Assembly of God Church in Boxside, Arkansas. And folks, I'm also glad that I can look back and say I don't believe I've ever lost my salvation, but there have been times that I have had to reset the journey because I've gotten off God's path and He's given me the opportunity to reset that journey and to start again fresh because His mercies are new every morning. I know, I know that there are still areas in my life that God wants to work on. I'm not there yet at where I want to be or where God wants me to be, but I can look back over my life and say, there's been a progression made. Sometimes really slow, but there's been a progression made. We're moving forward. We're getting somewhere. We're, we're, we're going forward with God. And I can look at this and say, I am so happy to know that there's an ultimate destination. There is a terminal, a terminus to this journey that's over there in the Father's house. I'm going to get there one day, but all along the way, He is with me. He never leaves me. He never forsakes me. He's there along the way of holiness with me every day. But let me wrap this up tonight with this final thought. It's called a way of holiness. It's called a way of holiness, meaning that we are to be set apart. You can't bring sin and filth and wickedness into this journey and expect God to be your traveling companion. It's a way of being set apart. Apart, I know holiness is not a popular message anymore, but those who walk in the way of holiness are set apart from the rest of the world. We are marked by the blood of Jesus Christ, but folks, we constantly make the journey to merge back into that highway and flow with the Holy Spirit. And we leave behind us the weights and the sin that might easily beset us, and we run with patience this race on this highway of holiness. I've got to make the choices between my way and God's way. I have to make the choice between sin and righteousness, and so do you. Why? Because I want to walk in the presence of the Holy Spirit more than I want to enjoy the sinful things that might bring me pleasure for a moment. I want to be separated from impurity. I want to be separated from, uh, from, from malice and from the appearance of evil. I want to walk with purity. I want to walk with integrity. I want my yes to mean yes and my no to mean no and walk with integrity because holiness means that I'm on a journey with Jesus. Man, I've heard all my life, and I still believe it's true. The Holy Spirit of God is the Holy Spirit. And He's not going to dwell in an unclean vessel. Now, it doesn't mean that every time I mess up, the Holy Spirit leaves me. That's not what that means. It's when I make the conscious, willful choice to continue in something that doesn't please God, I can't expect the Holy Spirit to stay in that vessel. I'm talking about the power and the anointing of God. I'm not even talking about our salvation right now. I'm just talking about that anointing, that communication with God, the power of God to experience joy and peace and love. I'm not talking about the slip. You accidentally stepped in something. I'm talking about willful continuation. You know God doesn't want you to lie, but you keep lying. You know God doesn't want you to steal, but you keep stealing. You know God doesn't want you in that relationship, but you continue that relationship. The willful thing, the willful thing. You know, Pastor, you're talking to the Sunday night crowd. I know, but we all need to be reminded of these things because it's so important we keep our will surrendered to His will. So important that we keep our will because Isaiah says this way is for the redeemed. <laughs> Aren't you glad I've been redeemed? I've been redeemed by love divine. <laughs> glory, glory, Christ is mine. So all to Him I now resign. For I have been, I have been redeemed. Have you been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb? Then lay it all down and walk in the presence of the Lord. Don't pick that stuff back up. God didn't set you free from sin so that you could go back and pick it up yourself. God didn't give you victory over sin so that you could wallow in it, you know, but so that you could walk on the highway of holiness. 
He says, there's no lion. I'm not going to go any deeper. I've got more notes, but I've said plenty for tonight. I feel like the Holy Spirit is saying, that's good. That's enough. But I want to point out, he says, the lion can't walk there. You want to be safe from the attack of the enemy? Get smack in the middle of God's highway of holiness, and you are protected from the devices of the evil one when you walk in the holiness of God. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word tonight. I pray, God, that you would encourage and strengthen each one of us as we walk in this spiritual life to seek to flee from sin and to draw near to your presence. God, because your word says that you will come, you will come in our trouble, you will come in our heartache, you will come in the midst of our trials. You will come, oh God. We know that, and we respond to you when you come. Come, Lord, by laying aside every weight, laying aside every sin, and walking with you in the way of holiness. Oh, God, strengthen this people as we go from here. You know what we face tonight and tomorrow for as many days as you have, have given us. You know what's coming. So, Lord, help us to lean into you, to lean into your power and into your strength. Prepare us for the journey, oh, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless.